Do you notice something wrong in the world today? Can you feel it? Are you ready for it? More importantly, do you know Christ? Sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we are embarking on a deep and challenging journey through the scriptures, where we will explore the profound truths and spiritual realities that affect our daily lives and relationships, especially within our families. We will delve into the stark choices we must make as followers of Christ, the inevitable divisions that may arise, and the call to spiritual strength and victory over the forces of darkness. Our foundation will be the timeless wisdom of the King James Bible, and our key scriptures will guide us as we seek to understand and apply God's word in our lives. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your wisdom and guidance. Open our hearts to the truths of your word and help us to navigate the challenges we face, especially within our families. Strengthen us by your spirit to choose the cup of the Lord over the cup of devils, to stand firm in the faith, and to overcome the wicked one. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our journey begins with the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. This verse presents us with a stark and undeniable truth. As followers, of Christ, we are called to make a clear and definitive choice between serving God and serving the forces of darkness. There is no middle ground, no room for compromise, and no way to straddle the fence between righteousness and wickedness. Paul's message to the Corinthians was a warning against idolatry and participation in pagan rituals that were prevalent in their society. In Corinth, as in many other places in the ancient world, it was common for people to engage in feasts and ceremonies that honored false gods and demonic entities. Paul makes it clear that such practices are incompatible with the Christian faith. To partake in these activities is to align oneself with the forces of evil and to betray the covenant relationship with the one true God. This principle is just as relevant today as it was in the first century. In our modern world, the cup of devils may not always take the form of overt pagan rituals, but it can manifest in many other ways. Compromise with sin, participation in ungodly activities, or even embracing worldly ideologies that contradict the teachings of Christ. The call to choose the cup of the Lord over the cup of devils is a call to holiness, to set ourselves apart from the corruption of the world and to live in full allegiance to Jesus Christ. The Bible is clear that we cannot serve two masters. Jesus himself said in Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. This applies not only to the pursuit of wealth, but to any form of idolatry or compromise with evil. As believers, 
We must choose to serve the Lord with undivided hearts, rejecting anything that would draw us away from him. As we continue our exploration of these scriptural truths, we come to a passage that many find challenging. Matthew 10:35, where Jesus says, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. This statement is echoed in Micah 7, 6, which reads, For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. At first glance, these verses may seem unsettling. After all, isn't Jesus the Prince of Peace? Didn't he come to bring reconciliation and harmony? Indeed, Jesus is the Prince of Peace, but the peace he offers is not the peace of this world. It is a peace that comes through the reconciliation of sinful humanity to a holy God, a peace that often disrupts the status quo and challenges deeply held beliefs and traditions. The division that Jesus speaks of is the inevitable result of the radical nature of his message. The gospel calls for a complete and total allegiance to Christ, one that transcends even the closest of earthly relationships. When a person chooses to follow Jesus, it often means breaking away from the beliefs, practices, and values of their family or community, especially if those beliefs are contrary to the gospel. In many cultures, including those of the biblical world, family ties are paramount. Loyalty to family often comes before all else, and to go against the wishes or traditions of one's family is seen as a grave offense. But Jesus makes it clear that our loyalty to him must come first, even if it means being at odds with our loved ones. In Luke 14, 26, Jesus says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. This does not mean we are to literally hate our family members, but it emphasizes that our love for Christ must be so great that by comparison, our love for others, even those closest to us, pales in comparison. The division that arises from following Christ can be painful. It can lead to rejection, estrangement, and conflict within families. Yet, this is the cost of discipleship. Jesus never promised that following him would be easy. In fact, he warned that it would often bring hardship and persecution. In Matthew 10, 34, just before the verse about family division, Jesus says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. The sword Jesus speaks of is the sword of truth, the word of God that pierces the heart and divides truth from falsehood, light from darkness, and righteousness from sin. When the gospel is proclaimed, it challenges people to make a choice, to follow Christ or to reject him. This choice can bring division, even within families, as some choose to embrace the truth while others reject it. In the midst of these challenges, we find a powerful word of encouragement in 1 John 2:14, I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. This verse speaks to the strength and victory that is available to us as believers in Christ. John addresses different groups within the church, fathers, young men, and children, each with their own unique experiences and challenges. The fathers are those who have walked with the Lord for many years and have a deep, abiding knowledge of God. The young men are those who are strong in their faith, filled with the Word of God, and actively engaged in the spiritual battle against the forces of evil. The children are those who are new to the faith, learning to trust and follow Jesus. For the young men, John emphasizes their strength and their victory over the wicked one. This victory is not because of their own power or might, but because of the word of God that abides in them. 
The Word of God is our source of strength, our weapon in the spiritual battle, and the means by which we overcome the schemes of the devil. The Bible is filled with promises of victory for those who trust in the Lord. In Romans 8:37, Paul declares, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. This victory is not just a future hope, but a present reality for those who are in Christ. We have been given the armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10, Tower 18, the power of the Holy Spirit, Acts 1, 8, and the authority of Jesus Christ's name, Luke 10, 19, to stand against the forces of darkness and to overcome the wicked one. The wicked one, Satan, seeks to destroy our faith, to sow division, and to lead us away from God's truth. He is the father of lies, John 8, 44, and the accuser of the brethren, Revelation 12 to 10. But through Christ, we have been given the victory. We overcome the wicked one by standing firm in the truth of God's word, by living in the power of the Holy Spirit, and by holding fast to our faith in Jesus Christ. As we continue our exploration of the spiritual battles we face as believers, we must turn our attention to one of the most insidious and pervasive enemies we encounter, the wickedness of our own hearts. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This verse serves as a stark reminder that our greatest struggles often come not from external forces, but from within. The heart, in biblical terms, represents the center of our emotions, desires, and will. It is the seat of our thoughts and intentions, the place where our decisions are made. However, because of the fall of humanity into sin, our hearts have been corrupted, and without the transforming power of God's grace, they are prone to wickedness and deception. This internal corruption manifests itself in various forms of temptation, leading us away from God and towards sin. The temptations that arise from the wickedness of the heart are numerous and varied, but they all have one goal, to lead us astray from the path of righteousness and into the bondage of sin. James 1, 14 to 15 explains the process by which temptation takes hold. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. This passage illustrates how temptation works. It begins with a desire, a lust, that entices us. If we do not resist, that desire grows and eventually gives birth to sin. If unchecked, sin leads to spiritual death, separating us from the life and peace that God intends for us. One of the most dangerous aspects of the wickedness of the heart is its ability to deceive us. We can easily rationalize or justify our sinful desires, convincing ourselves that what we want is good, or even that it is God's will. The self-deception can lead us to make choices that are in direct opposition to God's word. Proverbs 14:12 warns, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The wickedness of the heart blinds us to the truth, making us vulnerable to the lies of the enemy. The Bible provides numerous examples of how the wickedness of the heart can lead people astray. Consider the story of King David, a man after God's own heart, who fell into grievous sin because he allowed the wickedness of his heart to go unchecked. In 2 Samuel 11, we read about how David, driven by lust, committed adultery with Bathsheba, and then arranged for the death of her husband, Uriah. David's sin brought devastating consequences, not only for himself, but for his entire family and nation. This story serves as a powerful reminder that even those who are deeply committed to God can be led astray if they do not guard their hearts against temptation. Another example is found in the life of Judas Iscariot, one of Jesus' twelve disciples. Judas was given the privilege of walking with Jesus, witnessing his miracles, and hearing his teachings firsthand. Yet the wickedness of Judas's heart led him to betray Jesus for thirty pieces of silver. 
In John 13, 2, we are told that the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Judas's story illustrates how the wickedness of the heart, when left unchecked, can open the door for the enemy to take control and lead us into destruction. In light of these dangers, the Bible calls us to guard our hearts with all diligence. Proverbs 4.23 instructs, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. This means we must be vigilant in examining our thoughts, desires, and motivations, ensuring that they align with God's word. We must also be aware of the ways in which our hearts can lead us astray and take proactive steps to protect ourselves from temptation. One of the most effective ways to guard our hearts is through the discipline of daily communion with God in prayer and the study of his word. The psalmist declared in Psalm 119, 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. By immersing ourselves in scripture, we fill our hearts with God's truth, which equips us to recognize and resist the lies and temptations that arise from our own sinful nature. Another essential aspect of guarding our hearts is the practice of confession and repentance. When we recognize that we have allowed the wickedness of our hearts to lead us into sin, we must come before God in humility, confessing our sins and seeking his forgiveness. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 promises, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Through confession and repentance, we restore our fellowship with God and receive his grace to overcome future temptations. Furthermore, we must rely on the Holy Spirit to transform our hearts, making them more like Christ. In Ezekiel 36, 26, God promises, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. This transformation is a work of the Holy Spirit, who convicts us of sin, leads us into all truth, and empowers us to live in righteousness. Finally, we must also seek accountability within the body of Christ. God has placed us in a community of believers to support, encourage, and challenge one another in our walk with him. Hebrews 3.13 urges us, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. By opening our hearts to trusted brothers and sisters in Christ, we allow them to speak truth into our lives and help us stay on the path of righteousness. As followers of Christ, we are called to walk in wisdom and discernment, especially when it comes to the relationships and alliances we form. The Bible provides clear guidance on the dangers of placing our trust in those who do not share our faith, warning us of the potential pitfalls that can arise from such associations. Proverbs 14, seven to eight instructs us, go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. This passage highlights the importance of recognizing the difference between those who walk in godly wisdom and those who do not. When we place our trust in non-believers, we risk being led astray by their counsel, which is often rooted in worldly wisdom rather than in the truth of God's word. The Bible also warns us in Psalm 1.1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. This verse emphasizes the blessedness of avoiding the influence of those who do not honor God. Trusting in the advice or direction of non-believers can lead us down a path of compromise and sin, ultimately distancing us from the will of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Verse 14, 15, Paul further warns believers about forming close partnerships with non-believers. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? 
And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? This passage makes it clear that we are called to be separate from those who reject Christ, and that aligning ourselves with non-believers can result in spiritual harm. Trusting in non-believers, particularly in matters of faith and life direction, can be dangerous because their values and priorities are often in direct opposition to those of the kingdom of God. They may encourage us to pursue wealth, power, or pleasure in ways that contradict the teachings of Christ, leading us away from the path of righteousness. While we are called to love and witness to non-believers, we must exercise discernment in the level of trust and influence we allow them to have in our lives. Proverbs 13, 20 wisely advises, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. It is imperative that we seek counsel from those who are rooted in God's word and who share our commitment to following Christ. As we reflect on these scriptures, we are confronted with a clear and urgent call to choose whom we will serve, to stand firm in our faith, and to overcome the wicked one by the power of God's word. The choice between the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils is a choice that each of us must make. It is a choice between life and death, between blessing and cursing, between truth and deception. In Joshua 24, 15, Joshua challenged the people of Israel with these words. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This challenge is just as relevant for us today. We must choose whom we will serve and make that choice with full commitment and resolve. Standing firm in our faith may bring division, even within our own families, it may lead to conflict, rejection, and persecution. But Jesus has called us to take up our cross and follow him. Matthew 16, 24. The path of discipleship is not easy, but it is the path that leads to eternal life. As we stand firm, we must also remember that we are not alone. We have been given the strength and the resources we need to overcome the wicked one. The word of God abides in us and it is our weapon against the lies and schemes of the devil. The Holy Spirit empowers us to live in victory, to walk in righteousness, and to stand firm in the face of opposition. The scriptures we have explored today challenge us to make a clear and decisive choice in our walk with God. We cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. We cannot serve two masters. We must choose whom we will serve and stand firm in that choice, even when it brings division and conflict within our own families. The call to discipleship is a call to radical commitment, to placing Christ above all else, even our closest relationships. It is a call to strength and victory, to overcoming the wicked one by the power of God's word and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. As we close, let us commit ourselves to following Christ with undivided hearts, to standing firm in the truth, and to living in the victory that is ours through Jesus Christ. Let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word and the call to choose you above all else. Help us to stand firm in our faith, to overcome the wicked one, and to live in the victory that is ours in Christ. Strengthen us by your spirit to choose the cup of the Lord and to reject the cup of devils. May we be faithful in our walk with you, even in the face of division and opposition. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. We are excited to announce that Bible Adventures for Children is coming soon. This new series is designed to help children learn about the teachings of the Bible in a fun and engaging way. Some of the artistic artwork seen in this video will also be featured in the cartoon series. Please stay tuned for the release to help children, because as you know, the dark forces are targeting our children, and they are the future of our world and of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. We now extend an invitation to you 
not merely to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. Visit our website at awakeningrighteousness.com where you will discover a free blog, Christian canvas art, and a vast range of Christian books that delve even deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book serves as a beacon, illuminating the path to awaken the righteous version of yourself. By standing with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to disseminate the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in many hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. God be with you. Amen. Thank you.